Guys, welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. Today is episode 149, part two with Cody Nelson of the Outdoors. And we're going to be talking optics, tripods, glassing techniques, rifle scopes, pack systems, and much more. Also going to talk a little bit about hunter ethics and how far is too far to shoot. Uh, long range shooting, a lot of different stuff packed in this part two uh, episode 149. I want to thank you guys for your support of this podcast. I want to thank our sponsors uh, for their support of this podcast. GoHunt.com Insider is the title sponsor of this podcast. We also have the Outdoorsman's Western Hunter and Elk Hunter magazines, Utah Hydrographics, uh, Phone Scope, Wilderness Athlete. And I want to remind you with this episode with Cody Nelson of the Outdoorsman's that if you call in to the Outdoorsman's and use the promo code JSCOTT at 1-800-291-8065 or order off the website outdoorsmans.com, you can call in and get 10% off all Outdoorsman's products. So take advantage of that. Guys, if you want to follow along our adventures, please do so on our Instagram at J. Scott Outdoors, on YouTube channel, J. Scott Outdoors, Facebook, J. Scott Outdoors, and of course, our mother uh, homepage, blog, website, whatever you want to call it, uh, jscottoutdoors.com. Uh, guys, thanks for your support. Please make sure you subscribe, whether you're listening on iTunes uh, or on Podbean, please follow or subscribe. That way, when I upload new episodes, it automatically uh, comes to you and you don't have to wait uh, sometimes 12, 24 hours before they're uploaded onto iTunes. So, uh, guys, let's get right to this episode with Cody Nelson. It's amazing to see how far, you know, not only with like cell phone technology and you know, computers and iPads and all of that kind of stuff. But to look at how the mounting that the binoculars on a tripod and the optics themselves and the spotting well, scopes and Jay, some of the range I finding. Out with those nine by 25s. I used to sit those. This is a true story. I used to sit those on top of a Coleman. And, and if anybody knows, and remembers Coleman, it, they still make tripods, but they use, I still have one of their tripods. It's like a one pound tripod with a, with a, a little tiny little ball head on top of it. Yeah. Okay? I think I've seen them. And, and all yeah. the sheep hunters used to use them. Yeah. But I used to set those nine by 25s on <laughs> top of that ball head with, without, oh. it, they weren't even connected to anything. Like so I in used other to words, just, you were just using them for like a platform. Well, I, I mean, I might as well have just been using a walking staff. <laughs> so I mean, but you could see better. But you, I could you, see better. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, I mean, we in those days, you just we just did what we what we had to do to try to figure out, you know, how to see game better. And and you know, and then you know, my dad. I can remember my dad got a, a pair of ten by fifty customs, and that had this little. L-shaped bracket that you know you screwed into the front and you had to take off if you wanted to. I mean, it's just the stuff that we did to mount stuff on tripods back then was. I mean, it was crazy. So, you know, and I, I, I guess you're giving me a little segue here. I can talk about our product at this point, but Jay, I think that's what makes our little our, our bino adapter and our studs and the ability and, and well, not to mention the other parts that you know we've we over the years we've we've, you know, talked about and made and, and had all these ideas come from, you know, like the guys up at RCM and at Rim Country Manufacturing, you know, the partnership over the years has been phenomenal. And all I can tell you is, is that whether you're, whether you're mountain tens or eights or twelves or fifteens or all of these things, it makes it so that your, your system, and I use, and remember a use specific system or tool it makes it so it's all compatible. Yeah. And it makes it so it's, it, I don't want to say it's lightning quick, but, you know, it's all built precision enough that you can take a pair of binoculars off and sliding spotting scope on, and you're basically looking at the same field of view that you just left. And, and, yeah, and I, Cody, I think it blows my mind every day, every single day on Instagram. I, well, not every day, but between Facebook and Instagram, 
I see guys with their glassing setups, and I see rubber bands. <laughs> I, see, I, I see Velcro. I see uh, adapters that I know you flick one thing, and it just comes out. And with the, the, the bino adapter system that, that Outdoorsman's has, where it has the double locking mechanism, yep. you know, how many times – have people brought binoculars into the shop that have dropped them? Well, it happens all the time, um, and especially if they're not using a, an adapt, a adaptation system that well, is a Jay, double lock. I'll, I'll, I'll do you one worse. Not only I'll, I will bet you that there is a large portion of the repairs that we have that we. People bring their binoculars to us, and we send them into Swarovski or Zeiss or Leica. Or, or, I mean, you know, it's a full-service deal. We try to do everything we can to help people get their optics back and in time. And, and long story short, I can't tell you how many times people have walked in here and said, man, I, I, you know, I want to switch to your bino adapter because, you know, this bino adapter, I did this, and it slipped. It fell right off, and my binoculars broke and blocked. I, and, and I cringe every time I see it, and we explain to them why our system works, and that you know the fact that it, it clips in once, and then you have the neural, you have a knob to tighten it down, and once you show them that, they're like, oh man, that not only that, it's faster, it's better, it, you know, it's easier to use. Well, it, it, the other thing that I feel really horrible, guy, it, it's not the guys, I'm talking guys that have lost their binoculars. Period. <laughs> We had a guy a couple of years ago, not only did he lose one set, he lost a second set of 1556 binoculars and literally bought another set, and he lost those. Yeah. It, On the it, second set, work. Jay, I gave him one of our bino adapters free of charge because I said, look, I appreciate the business, and, and, and as long as you want to keep losing them and you keep buying them for me, I, I, I'm just – I'm going to save you some time on this deal. And I, I, I literally, I installed it and I put it on and I gave it to him. And he came back after the, the, the hunt and he said, Cody, you know, I just really appreciate that. You know, I, I, you know, I mean, he did, he, I'm not trying to make fun of the guy. He just, he just said, I just really yeah. appreciate the fact that you would care enough about me not losing my binoculars, you know, to, to just give me that product. He says, that's the, he said it, it made my hunt. And I, I mean, I was like, holy cow. But I, I can say, Cody, that, you know, I've been doing this podcast now over a year, and I have a lot of faithful listeners out there. And one thing I can say without a shadow of a doubt now, The Outdoorsman is a sponsor of my podcast, and I greatly appreciate that. But with that being said, I can say without a shadow of a doubt that The Outdoorsman's Bino ad Adapter System and all the different accessories that they have to mount spotting scopes on tripods, binoculars on tripods, there is not a better system that I know of out there, period. And there's not a system that even comes close. And I can say that with no reservation, with, with a complete confidence that I'm telling the listeners out there, if you don't have outdoorsman's bino adapter or spotting scope adapter you are missing out and you do not have the best system out there period there's no argument there's nobody out there that could even come on here and even come close to giving me an argument that it's not the best system out right. there. period and jay i really appreciate you saying that and well I, i'm not just saying you no know, i, I know truth. but it, it's you know it's really funny because you know we've had a lot of growth here in the last couple of years and 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 I, you know I, this is the point where i get to talk about the team at, at the outdoorsman's and 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 the people that we have behind this and and I'm talking about our manufacturers, Rim Country Manufacturing, Mike and Marty up there. They're, they're, you know, they're always thinking of new stuff and coming up with new stuff. And and the product that they put out is as good as it gets. Um, Floyd, Chris Denham, uh, Courtney Denham. I mean, you start talking about all the people involved with what we're trying to do, all the way down to the guy that packs these boxes every day. Are, are we fallible? Do we make mistakes? Yes. But everything that we do with these little things, it's always about trying to provide 
the best experience for you when you get out in the in the in the backwoods or you know the mountains or you know trying to to help you with your hunt and ultimately uh, w- what I like to say is just like I just like being really good at helping you find game. Well, how about the stories that you know Cody people don't know that I know for a fact I've had people call me and say I ran over my binoculars my hunt starts in 3 days what do I do? I said go down there and call Cody at the outdoorsman. Get down there. Yeah. And and I know specific cases where you've given them your own pair of binoculars, your binoculars. Yeah. And 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 guys maybe that you don't even know. Yeah. And they take your binoculars into the field to go and then they come back and buy a pair of binoculars from you or or you know the repairs and and just the customer service and that's something that you know you can't get out of New York. You can't get it out of a catalog. You can't call the catalog and and say well, my hunt starts in three days. They don't care. Jay, it's and it's, I think that's something that's missing. And I think that people need to really understand that you guys are down there and customer service. Every single customer is important to you. Well, and Jay, I think it it you know kind of. I, you know, I, it's kind of funny because I was listening to your podcast with, with Jason the other day, you know, from Kuyu, and, you know, those guys do such a great job at what they do, and, and you know, you're you're always trying to figure out, you know, the, the best products and the whatever, but it always comes back to there's another something in there that, that really counts, and I, and I would tell you that, and I'm blowing, I'm kind of tooting my own horn here, and I'm not trying to be... But if we get one compliment over and over again, it's always that, you know, those guys did really whatever they could to help me get started or they they went overboard to to make me, you know, educated and know. And, and sometimes this even happens when the guy didn't buy from us. Yeah. And that's the thing that makes I mean, the difference it, is you, you, you know you understand that a, a guy sometimes will try to they'll go buy a, a three thousand dollar binocular somewhere else and he'll call me for a, a sixty dollar part. Now th- there's the competitor in me that's like, well, man, I got shafted on that deal. But at the same time, I'm going to treat that guy no differently if he bought a sixty dollar part for me that he that he bought a thirty a three thousand dollar part for me or or a binocular. And right. And those are the things that we are always, always, always. I'm, I, and I, and I, and I talk to my guys, and we always, hey, look, treat this as if this was your own hunt. Treat this as if this was your own binocular. Teach them just like you got taught. Right. You know, w- walk them through the scenario, and and really, what it comes down to, it comes down to service and knowledge. I, I can't compete with the Cabela's on a, on a on a full scale, you know. Um, uh, 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 in, in a, in a uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, I, I can't compete with them on that large scale business like that. Right. But what I can big, do big is big box store mentality. But, but yeah, but, but what I can do is every person person that that rings our phone, or every person that that, that buys from our internet, or every person that 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 comes in our store and touches my counter, I can treat that person exactly how I want to be treated when I go to to a place and and i don't know you know maybe i'm uneducated or maybe i've been maybe i am educated but i just i i want to reaffirm something all i care about is is treating that person exactly how i want to be treated when i go into a store now jay do we make mistakes yes have we shipped the wrong product to a guy yes um do 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 we get going sometimes and have so many uh, uh, I mean, literally, I'm having, tr- I mean, tr- having trouble. We've had such an explosion on certain parts that you know, I, I got the guys up in pace, and they're they're working double time to keep up. Right. And, and and that's a good problem to have. Right. And and I'm not saying that we're infallible. All I'm saying is is that we try to treat every scenario as if it was like we we wanted ourselves to be treated, and 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 we I just think we do a really good job of of helping people being honest with people, telling them straight out, hey, look, this is how it's going to be. This is, you know, this is what I can do for you. And then when the really bad things happen and somebody breaks to something or whatever, 
Um, yeah, Jay, I have. I've given people my personal binoculars. Um, I've seen you bend over backwards for people that, you know, like you said, maybe didn't even buy it from you. And all of a sudden, here you are. And I, I just shake my head. And but I know you as a person. And that's, you know, you've got such a big heart. And I think that's one thing that I, I, I want to make sure I convey in this podcast is I've known you for 20 years and you have as big a heart as anybody I've ever met. And and you take even a stranger. But if they're a hunter and you have that that common bond, they're a brother and you treat them like that. And I think that's important for people to know out there. Uh, Cody, let's take a quick break here. Okay. GoHunt.com Insider is by far the most valuable tool a Western hunter could give themselves. GoHunt.com Insider are the industry leaders and number one source for Western hunting for a lot of reasons. GoHunt.com Insider have changed the game for how hunts and hunting information are found. Within a matter of minutes using filtering 2.0, you'll be able to filter by state, species, residency, odds of drawing a tag, specific hunting dates, and harvest success percentages to find the hunts that fit exactly what you're looking for. If you are a guy that applies across the West or just in your home state but want to find some new opportunity, there's no better way to do it than using GoHunt.com Insider. As an exclusive offer to my listeners, if you sign up for a GoHunt.com Insider membership for $149 a year and use the promo code JSCOTT, at checkout, you'll receive a $50 Kuyu gift card. Head on over to GoHunt.com forward slash insider and get yourself the most valuable membership a hunter could have. I have known the owners of the Outdoorsman's in Phoenix for over 20 years. They are the authority on optics and hunting gear. Outdoorsman's is the leading designer and manufacturer of high-quality tripods, mounting accessories, and pack systems for all hunters. Their customer service is the best in the business. Go to Outdoorsmans.com or call 1-800-291-8065 and use the J. Scott promo code to receive 10% off any Outdoorsman's products. Cody, I know uh, the Outdoorsman's has been just going through unbelievable growth the last few years, and you guys have been doing really well at the shows. And, uh, you know, it's hard to go anywhere where people don't know the name The Outdoorsman's. Uh, and the Outdoorsman's pack system uh, has really come a long ways. And uh, you've got you've got a new pack out. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, we uh, we just launched. Um, you know, for, well, let me kind of give a little history. We've we basically had one bag configuration. Um, uh, you know, that's always been the consistent. You know, this is our main bag, and that was the the Optics Hunter. And, you know, a, a couple of years ago, we added the long range, which basically allowed a telescoping, you know, a zipper top that allowed it to telescope upward and allowed, you know, a guy's pack to grow by like 1,500 cubic inches. And this year, um, you know, over the years, I, I, we, we've just been really trying to listen to people and listen to our customers and listen to what people wanted and listen to the things that, that we could introduce and enhance the packs with not sacrificing the quality, the integrity of the pack, the strength of the pack, um, but adding some features that we thought were, well, I mean, just, I, I, I don't like to, bra I don't know, I've had compliments on this pack that it's one of the most well thought out packs I've seen. Um, I, I had a, a, another person that's a, a competitor of ours here in town stop by. He was picking up some product for himself, um, and he he literally said, Cody said, that might be one of the best hunting packs and well-designed packs that, that, that I've ever tried on. And I thought, wow, I, I mean, the, in, you know, in, in, he looked at it for, you know, this was a five-minute conversation. So My answer to that would be, duh. They're well, hunters. Of it, course, it's going to be a great hunting pack. Yeah, it's it's now look. It, it's there are there are packs out there. I mean, you've got you know Aaron Schneider over at Kuyu. You've got you know Jason at I mean I'm sorry Aaron Schneider at Kifaru, and you got um, you got Jason and, and the guys at at Kuyu, and you've got Dana Gleason up at, at, at Mystery Ranch. Look, th there's a lot of great packs out there. Um, I think our pack is 
stacks up right in the mix of all of that. Um, I think our frame is completely and totally unique to um, its design and its versatility. Um, I think it gives an edge on, on comfort, but yet holds up to, you know, the heaviest of loads and carries a lot of those loads. You know, like even your 50 or 60 pound loads, I just think it makes it feel a lot different than a lot of other packs. They are bomb proof. I'll give you that. And so this year, Jake and myself and, and my, my pack maker, and we really, really, tried to hone this in and, and it, it took me three or four different prototypes to actually get to this stage and when we finally got to this one we we really really we felt like we hit it out of the, the park on this but jay we've we've added the the main thing that people will notice about this pack um starting from top to bottom is that you will notice that the the lid has changed um, there is a an L-shaped padded binocular pocket, and it's specifically made for you know a 10 or a 12 or a 15. It'll hold you know an 8 or a 10. I mean, it'll hold whatever you want in terms up to uh, the largest pair of 15s that we we've put in there were the Zeiss Conquest HDs, and it'll hold those nicely. Um, but it is a an L-shaped zippered pocket on top of the bag that is what I would like to refer to as a quick, you know, easy access pocket for when you need to put your pack down, grab your binoculars, and take your tripod. And that brings me to the next thing that's different. This particular pack does not have side pockets. It has three compression straps, and in between those compression straps, there are two um, buckle straps, and your legs would go into a, an elastic side pocket. And the reason we did that was is that the one, and I don't even want to say it was a complaint, it was just the one suggestion we kept having over and over again was access to their optics and access to their, their tripod legs without having to undo all the compression straps. Yeah. And we really felt that we could, you know, utilize that system and make it quick to where people could lay down a pack, grab the optic and grab the tripod and literally, you know, be in their in their optics in under let's say a minute. Right. Whereas you used to have to undo all the straps and pull out. And I'm not saying anything's wrong with that. It's just that this pack we really tried to just make that a different system. And the, and I mean, the reviews and the things that, and the people that have looked at it, you know, the Western hunter guys and, and Chris Denham and Nate Cinnamons and everybody that's looked at the pack and Ryan Hatfield, Zach Bohe, everybody that's looked at it has, I mean, they can't wait to get their hands on it. And our first run of packs is getting ready to, it should be, well, it should be here the middle of the month. And, Everybody is just reeling, you know, to 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 use this pack for this, you know, the, this coming hunting season. Um, the third thing that we did that that everybody's been asking for, and of all of our packs, this is the pack that I would use most if I'm using, you know, uh, as a backpack, you know, in terms of long range stuff as opposed to just maybe using it it'll it'll be a day pack just fine too the one thing that we've changed that's uh that, that everybody has been this has probably been the number one thing people have been asking for you can now disconnect the four corners of the bag and there are three uh compression straps on the sides and there are on each side, and then there are two compression straps on the bottom where where the where the the the, the meat frame, you know, the meat uh, uh, shelf is. Shelf. Mm -hmm. This will allow you to keep your gear in your pack, and allow you to either slide, you know, your meat or your bone, you know, however you're doing it. Um, it will allow you to extend the pack away from the frame, and 
allow you to pull a full load of meat or, you know, maybe you're hauling your camp out or maybe, you know, whatever you're doing, but it will fully allow you to extend the pack away from the bag and then cinch it up tight and be able to come out with what I like to call a dual load. So in other words, your heavy stuff's going to be closest to your back. Exactly. Okay, but your but your other stuff stays in the actual gear bag and doesn't get bloody or doesn't get wet or you know what have you. It it straps on exactly. to you, but you're keeping the weight right next to you. Yep. And the uh, the thing that we were able to do is that because of the redesign of the pockets on the bag, um you still you still have a way to um uh uh um, scabbard, a rifle, or a bow, um, which, you know, that's all still the same, except for we've changed the, the rear pockets. There are now more rear pockets. There is now a, a zippered access pocket to the lower third of the pack. Um, the, you know, I, I, you know, I mean, we, we, we both know and love Dave Martin to death, but Dave Martin's a pocket guy, and, and he was begging me to make a pack with a lot more pockets, and so, Dave, I hope you're happy. <laughs> uh, I, I certainly am with the design and everything we've done with it. Um, but, uh, this pack, we were actually able in the long range configuration, we were able to keep it as light as the optics hunter is now, but we were able to add the carrying capacity and, and keep, and basically keep it as the same weight or less. What is the carrying capacity? Uh, you're looking at uh, at 5,500 on the uh, on the actual pack itself in the the non extended form, and this has a removable lid, and 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 it also has a telescoping uh, center pocket. So when when it goes from there, it will actually um, it'll jump up to 6,500, and then you know if you extend the pack away from it. And put a you know like a dual load in there, um, Jay. I, I I'm not even sure how much we. I, <laughs> I haven't I had the opportunity to put an uh, an elk you know quarter in there yet, but I know it fits. And and I put my uh, I tested it on my strip hunt this year, and and literally put uh, put my entire mule deer in there. So um, we quartered that thing up, and and uh, and I carried out quite a heavy load. Um, thank God it wasn't uh, it wasn't a, a five mile deal, but it was a, about a mile and a half from the road, and uh, and it worked out very very well. We were very pleased with the way that everything was 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 designed. And Cody, uh, what are those packs? What are the names of those packs? Yeah, this is it, it's it's the Outdoorsman's Long Range Pack. L- long Range Pack. Okay, yeah, I'm excited to see that for sure. I saw it. Uh, I believe I saw it at the Western Hunting Show. I think you had a prototype there. Yeah, that that was uh, and there there was just a, a couple little changes that that were made from that, and uh, so we you know, we've actually um, we actually got the prototypes back and tested that and everything worked out perfectly. So awesome. uh, we're we're awesome. we are now fully in production and expecting the first run of packs to uh, to hit here in the next couple weeks in June. Awesome. Let's take a quick break here. Utah Hydrographics is in the water transfer printing service and they are open to whatever you can dream up. Choose from a wide range of camel patterns, designs, and colors. Whether it's guns, bows, tools, rifle stocks, vehicles, steering wheels, fenders, dashboards, paint guns, fishing rods, cups, tripods, watches, knife grips, helmets for a local sports team or for your motorcycle, picture frames, mailbox, animal skulls, you name it, they can probably do it. Utah Hydrographics loves taking things that are general looking and turns them into something that looks fantastic and eye-popping. Give them a call and see what they can do for you and receive up to a 10% discount by using the J. Scott 16 promo code. Visit them at utahhydrographics.com or on Instagram at Utah Hydrographics. Whether you are interested in elk, deer, antelope, bighorn sheep, or moose, Western Hunter and Elk Hunter magazines will bring the adventure to your mailbox. These publications feature articles on the finest hunting gear, tips and tactics from experienced hunters, field judging trophies, glassing techniques, calling strategies, and much more. To become a more knowledgeable and skilled hunter, subscribe today. 
Go to westernhunter.net forward slash jscott and enter your email address for a chance to win a $1,500 credit towards any Swarovski product. Okay, Cody. So the pack is the long range. Yeah, the outdoorsman's long range hunter. The outdoorsman's long range hunter. And what's the price on that? Uh, the, the the standard price is, is going to be five twenty nine ninety nine, and the the introductory price that's that's running here through the, uh, up into June um, is uh, we're offering it at four eighty nine ninety nine. Okay, and um, when will guys be able to come into the shop and see those, uh, one? And two, can they order them already on the we've website? We've actually or got call? the three prototypes um, that are in the shop right now, um, and these are finished. This is exactly what's coming out of the, you know, our production runs, um, and uh, they can come into the shop right now and see the, the three different versions of that. We have a, a, an all Coyote Brown we have a, a Coyote Brown base with a multicam on all the pockets, and then we have a, uh, a Coyote Brown base with a uh, with our True Timber Quiet Cloth on all the pockets, and uh, they're they're all three of them are just I mean sharp looking, uh, great looking packs. So, you know, I, I I beg guys to come in and look at them and put your hands on them and load them up and. And uh, we actually, you know, we had guys bring their stuff in all the time and load up their specific packs and put them on. And, you know, we, we let them, we'll let them walk around the building if they want to. Good. That's great stuff. Cody, another question I get from uh, listeners is about rifle scopes. And I wanted to ask you uh, some things about what, what should guys be looking for when buying a rifle scope? And to take that a step further, what mistakes the guys make do you think when when purchasing the wrong scope or or well, just what mistakes do you think people make when you know jay there's um god there's this is and i know this is this is a large subject to cover because um you really get this is the stuff that makes guys or breaks guys and the long range, the long range part of today, has changed forever. The wants and needs of a scope. I mean, just I mean, exponentially, it's gotten larger. And I think that the if I had to put one thing that guys I think underestimate, overestimate, or don't really think through is what gun are they putting it on? And what is their ultimate goal, you know, in weight? And then third, what are they trying to do distance wise? Because what happens is is that we get guys that call the shop all the time and they go, Okay, I'm building this custom gun rifle, uh, or custom rifle and and I'm 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 I want to do this. And let's say Jay that they're for in, for an instance they're they're building or for example they're building a you know a, a six and a half pound rifle. And I think at some points guys then take you know they're building this you know really lightweight rifle, and then they're wanting to overbalance it and, and it, you know they put these huge monstrosities of scopes, and then they they complain maybe that the gun's too heavy or the scope's too big for the gun. And so that happens a lot. And I think what guys need to really, what they need to figure out is in the beginning, what are you really trying to do with this gun? Because most, you know, I mean, let's face it, most long range guns are not necessarily lightweight guns. It, 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 that's almost counter, counterproductive. It's almost two forces working against each other. So what you realize is, is that guys are building these rifles and then, you know, that maybe they just haven't, you know, clearly thought out what it is that they're trying to do with these, what, you know, with these, these scopes. So, you know, if a guy's building an ultra, a uh, 300 ultra mag and, you know, the gun weighs 10 and a half pounds and, you know, it, it's, it, it, you know, I, I'm a kind of person that kind of likes to match the scope and, and its capabilities with the caliber and, and, you know, on, on a bigger rifle like that, you know, the new uh, Swarovski X5, um, you know, which is dang near a 30-ounce scope. 
Um, you know, you start looking at some of the Night Force stuff, and, you know, these are much bigger scopes with, with you know, much more power and bigger bells on them for, you know, more light gathering, and they're normally higher powers. Um, you know, those scopes are actually, I mean, th- those are right in tune with what I would expect to go on, on those, those rifles. What we really find is, is that guys that call and they go, well, you know, I want to be really good at, at, at long distance shooting. Well, what does that mean to you? Define that for me. And literally what the, what you end up finding is, is that guys maybe necessarily don't want to be that thousand yard shooter, but what they're really trying to do, Jay, is they're trying to extend themselves from, you know, that, you know, I don't know. Yeah. You used to hear, Oh, you know, three, 400 yards was my, my top, you know, and that, I don't feel comfortable shooting by that. And we still get that today. Well, if that's the case, you know, guys will say, well, you know what, Cody, I, I, I've been real comfortable shooting out to 400 yards my whole life. And, you know, I'd, I'd really like to see what it's like to extend it out to six or 700 yards. Well, we can do that. And you can do that fairly efficiently without adding big giant scopes. And, you know, you can, you can go to like a, a Z5, uh, you know, Swarovski three and a half to 18 by 44, and and we can build a custom turret with specific yard you know yardages on there for you, to where it makes it it, it makes all your shooting from you know, like a 200 yard zero all the way out to six or 700 yards makes it very doable. And so I think that's the difference is that we're really trying to be specific with what we are, you know, what we're asking and what the customers really want. You know, I mean. But we do. We we have people walk in that just want to be good at, you know, uh, 700 yards. And we get people that walk in and say, I want to shoot out to 1,000 yards no matter what. This is the capability that I want. And so, you know, you just have to work people into, the, into that, what they're comfortable with and what ultimately they want their rifle to feel like and, and how heavy they want it to be. And I think, that's a, that, I think that those are the biggest mistakes that people make from the get-go. What do you say to the guy, because I've gotten it before, I get it quite often, you know, maybe once a month, I get guys saying, you know, should I spend the money on my binoculars or should I spend the money on my rifle scope? Well, and it's like that, I mean, there's 20 ways to go, go at that question, it, but what's your answer? And Jay, I think that the one step farther is, is that we get guys all the time and, and, and look, I shoot a custom rifle, um, but I build as many Tika T3s. You know that shoot. I, I've never. I, I don't even know of a Tika that didn't shoot. And I, the, like the the my one of my most popular combinations that we sell is a Tika T3 in whatever caliber you're choosing. And and we and we use tally you know lightweight rings and and we use uh, and and we put a, a three and a half to 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 18 by 44 uh, Z5 with a custom turret. I, I would tell you that that is one of the most most popular systems that people. Now, the reason I'm bringing up that scenario is, is this: you basically got a $600 rifle, and you got a $1,600 scope. And so people would ask all the time, "Well, you know, God, aren't I putting a little more money into the scope?" Well, yes, you are. And I would just always tell people that most rifles, given that they have a good trigger pull, and given the fact that you've put the right load in them, and you've researched the, 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 you know, the different bullets that fly out of that particular gun well, if you take those things and that rifle, that rifle typically will be incredibly consistent out to the distances that we're talking about, you know, six, 700 yards. So at that point, the, the, you know, then, then you have a guy that's like, well, I, I just, you know, I want to put, you know, like, you know, a $200, you know, whatever scope on there. Well, and then you hear about him having problems with his zero, and you know he can't keep it on. T- and and it's almost always attributed to the scope and how it's mounted. And so I just always, I, I just think it's, I, I, I just am, I, I'm a guy that leans towards. I'd rather have the better glass and the more consistent internals and heavy duty internals on those scopes, and and have a more consistent, repeatable scope. Because I know the rifle is gonna is gonna be you know repeatable as long as I've done my my due diligence on that. 
I think the scope is typically the part that's the, the most, you know, the least reliable of those. So um, um, I, I just fair enough. I I just like having, I just like making sure. And I'm not saying you have to go, you know, spend three thousand dollars on a on a scope, you know, for a five hundred dollar rifle. But you know, right. if you're going to spend the money and and you know try to do these things, I would just rather be really really sure on. You know, I mean, and there's, there is, there's a lot of good options. You can do a Zeiss HD5 with, I mean, that, that talk about a great scope, that Zeiss HD5, you've got 17 minutes of angle. Um, you know, you've got, it, it's a little bit heavier than Swarovski, but it's really well made and rugged. Um, you know, you got a bunch of the Vortex, the, the Viper series is a real good series for that. And, um, and I, I just, all of them with the ability to do custom turrets and, and uh, I, I just think that, that people, uh, if they will follow that kind of scenario, I think they'll be much happier in the end than, uh, than you know, the, I, I see it too where people build, you know, a $1,000, you know, buy a $1,000 rifle and then they you know, put a $200 scope on it and then they're not happy with the yeah. results. Yeah, or buy a $5,000 rifle well, and put a five, you know, it's well, just I, I've ridiculous. seen that too. But I would say for most people listening to this podcast that are, that are hunters, you know, if, if you can get out there where you can shoot, you know, three, four, 500 yards consistently, uh, you know, to me, a lot of the long range stuff is great for shooting at the range and, you know, practicing long range shooting and being able to, you know, shoot the thousand yard tournaments and all that. That's fantastic. But, you know, the other argument, and it's probably for another day and time, but, um, you know, you get much, in my opinion, this is this is me standing on my soapbox, you get much over 500 yards shooting at an animal. In my opinion, you have to start questioning yourself on, on ethics. Well, and that's my opinion. And I think that number for me has grown a little bit over the last 10 years. Sure. You know, maybe from 300 to 500 as equipment gets better. I've seen a lot of things happen as a guide, and I've shot a lot of animals myself. Jay, we, and you get like, much past 500 I, yards. I, I understand. Here. And and here's the thing: I, we, as a general rule, this is the 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 the, the and that is it, again, it's the one mistake guys make, and it's it's the one defining question that you have to ask these guys: What are you ultimately trying to do? Yeah. And 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 Jay, every single one of them, we go through the same scenario. First, you know, you, you know, are are you working up your load? Are you making sure that the gun is as accurate as possible? You know, is your trigger pull right? You, know, you start going through that. Okay, now, are are you are you testing this? You know, are you shooting these long ranges? And are you putting these on paper? Don't just tell me you can hit a gong at at, at five or six or seven hundred yards. Uh, to me. That, 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 if you put a little orange dot on a gong and you and, 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 and you say, oh gee, I hit the gong, and I mean, I want to see it on paper. I want right. to see what the I want to measure it on paper. And I'm not saying that the guys shooting at gongs are doing themselves a disservice, but no, absolutely. But, but not. we have guys, we have guys that'll tell me that the turret's off, and I'll say, well, okay, so, um, do you have a target? Maybe you could take a picture and show me, and 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 so that I can assess it. Oh no, I was just shooting at a gong. Well, do you have a picture of the gong so I can see it? Well, no, I, I don't. I don't. I, we did. I don't know. I said, okay. Well, so do you actually know that it's three and a half inches low, or I mean, did you try this over a couple different days, or is this you know just the first time that this has ever happened? You know, you, the, the number of scenarios that go into this, Jay, are, are I mean, it's mind-boggling. And, well, and I, it, I mean, I, is it the yeah. shooter air? Is it atmospheric conditions? Is there something wrong with the scope? Did you change loads? Yeah. You know, all of these things we've, we, I mean, I've had guys call the shop and tell me, and you know, to their blue in the face that, you know, we screwed a turret up or we did this or we did that. And then you find out that they changed the load. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, if you change the load, it's going to change the turret settings or the, you know, the, it's the gonna change the, everything. It's going to change everything. Yeah. So, I, and I'm not, you know, in, in, you know, I don't, I mean, look, have we, I built a turret for a guy for a Z5 once that, that was, that, that, that's a quarter minute click and I built it off of three six. Yeah. Have you guys heard about PhoneScope? PhoneScope is a privately held company that makes custom molded, precisely engineered smartphone digiscoping adapters. 
photographing wildlife has never been easier. Take digiscoping photos and videos from your smartphone and share them with your friends. Phonescope stands behind their product with a 100% money back guarantee. Phonescope is the future of digiscoping. Get yours now. Use the JSCOT16 promo code and receive 10% discount on all purchases. Check them out at Phonescope, that's P-H-O-N-E-S-K-O-P-E dot com, or on Instagram, at Phonescope. Wilderness Athlete is committed to improving the health and quality of life for the outdoor athlete by providing field-tested, scientifically validated nutrition and sports performance products. Check them out at wildernessathlete.com and use the J. Scott promo code to receive 10% off any order. I gave the guy a free turret because, I mean, he wasted a bunch of ammo on something that I made a mistake on. Yeah. And, and, and guys, guys need to be, the, the whole shooting thing is, you know, it's due diligence. Does the rifle do what you say it does? Is, is the rifle and the ammo and the scope and, and everything it's doing, is it repeatable? Is it, is it continuous? Is it, is it the same as, as in, in, in methodical all the time? Well, and but to take it one step further, and I can say whatever I want because it's my well, podcast. It's your podcast. Actually, you, actually, you can say whatever you want to because <laughs> you're my guest. But when you start shooting at something that can take one step and it change everything, sure. for me, about 500 yards, maybe 550 yards is about that point when a deer takes a step, an elk takes a step, and they change everything. And the amount of time it takes from zero to 550 yards for the bullet to get there sure. you start shooting at 750 yards and you're adding that much more time for an animal to turn to twist and in my mind those are got those are animals that are created by god and i don't think that we should just be out there willy-nilly at well, seven eight nine a thousand twelve hundred yards now can it happen and there's guys that shoot a million times better than I do that could sit down and, and hit that all the time. And for them, that's okay. I'm going to tell you that I've shot deer over 500 yards. I've shot deer, uh, quite a few deer over 500 yards, but very rarely will I ever take a shot that's much more longer than well, that. That's kind of yeah, my You, you want to know the rate. funny part of this whole conversation? Yeah. I keep building all these turrets for everybody and I keep, keep building them for myself and Floyd and I have, you know, we've certainly been playing with the 3378 that's, you know, shoots over 4,000 feet per second. And I mean, I think my turret on it goes out to 1,175 yards. You know what the funny thing about all this is? I haven't even had the opportunity to shoot everything over 400 yards since I've been doing this for five years. (laughs) Yeah. And I I think that's the thing that I love long range shooting and I think it's fantastic and I don't want anybody, I'll get some emails, go ahead and send them. That's fine. Um, I get some emails And in my opinion, when you go hunting, everybody has their distance that they should probably stick within. And I think practicing at a thousand, it's just like practicing archery at a a hundred and being able to shoot 50. And, and, you know, if you practice at 150 seems short, great. Okay. About at that 50 yard range, stuff starts taking a step, starts twisting, lifting their head, lifting their shoulder, all sorts of things can happen Every, you know, everybody has to kind of check themselves, in my opinion, with this whole long range thing and, and make sure that they're they They can make that shot, you know, well, nine, 99 out of 100 times and then go ahead. Jay, I'll flat out say this. Um, look, I, 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 I think I have the greatest job in the world. I earn, you know, a living doing it. it it's my livelihood. Um, um, I, I love this shop. I love what we do. I. I love the industry. I love all of it. And the one thing that I find myself repeatedly saying to the guys that maybe don't know as much, you can tell when the guys call who's more educated or not educated and, and about the long-range hunting thing. And, and I know that it's a, a, it's a big subject and a lot of people like to touch on it. But the one thing that I find myself saying to everybody repeatedly when these things come up and, and we do. We get into some of these debates, and, and you know, and, and most of the guys are, are pretty cool about stuff. But, Jay, I don't owe it to you. I don't owe it to anybody. But I owe it to the animal. 
I owe it to the animal that no matter what distance I'm shooting at, I don't care if it's five yards or 500 or 1,500, you owe it to the animal to be able to have all your gear capable of doing what you say it's going to do and do it repeatedly. Now, yeah. when I say that, I'll tell you the biggest thing that I think that people need to be able to have, and Jay, I think you know me well enough to know that I've sat on deer for days on end because the situation wasn't right. Guys have to utilize and understand when the time to take a shot versus not take a shot. Yeah. I think that's the thing I hear of most is that guys are like, well, you know, he was – I'm like, look, if you were even in question, is killing that deer that important to you that you couldn't have waited him out or couldn't have found him? But CJ, I'll, I'll accept that responsibility, and I'll take that scenario, and I'll flat out tell you, if it's the difference between me wounding a deer and not wounding a deer – I'll wait another day and maybe have the chance of never seeing that deer again. And, and Jay, I'll just tell you, you know, I've been with you. I've hunted with you. I've been on stocks with you. I've been on recoveries with you. I've been on recoveries where we didn't find the animal. I've been on recoveries where we did find the animal. And I'm just here to tell everybody, and you know it, we've all done it. There is nothing worse knowing that you've wounded a deer and you haven't found it or, or whatever. Yeah, that that, that is th those are nights in camp that are awful. Nights well, and I think you, I think in those situations you have to ask yourself: Did I do everything calculated that I could do to do it efficiently, and did it just happen? And that and that's just chalk it up to you know it just happened, or did I do something that was out of character? Or did I do something that I I stepped above my my expertise level and do something that I shouldn't have done. And I think all of us can answer those questions, but I think all of us should answer those questions. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think it's important when we talk about this long range stuff, uh, you know, I think everybody has their own range. I mean, look, I can cast a fly line further than some people, but there's a lot of people that can cast a fly line and a fly more accurately at a longer distance than I can. So everybody has their own skill set. Yep. Um, and everybody has their own ability and you know, it's, it's when you're shooting at an animal, in my opinion, not just hitting the animal, but hitting them in the proper place is important. And everybody has that distance that they, they can accurately and comfortably and efficiently do that. And everybody has, has to be their own judge of their own, you know, I'm not here to judge anybody. I mean, there's snipers out there and guys that train in long range shooting that could probably shoot a deer at a thousand yards it's better than I can shoot one at 400. So, but you know, there, I just know that I know one thing I do know is I know animals and I know their behavior and I know what can happen in one step. And it, it can be a difference between shooting them right in the heart and shooting them right in the butt or shoot, you know, whatever. Absolutely. And so that's uh, yeah. Cody, this has been an awesome podcast. Uh, I'm so glad to have you. I'm so glad the outdoorsman's is, been a sponsor of the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. I want to thank you for your friendship, uh, but I want to thank you for your expertise in the industry and, and the customer service and the, and the guy that you are taking that big heart uh, into the business world. And uh, just thanks for being on and sharing with us. Uh, and I uh, look forward to seeing a uh, big bull picture with you with the big bull. Hopefully I'm in it. Yeah. Hopefully, well, hopefully, uh, I, yeah. I mean, you know, either way, Jay, we're going to have some fun on that hunt and, and, uh, I feel uh, very fortunate to draw the tag. I feel most fortunate to, uh, again, uh, allowing you or you allowing me to uh, to bring, you know, the outdoorsmen and our products and and our our uh, our our business to your uh, to your podcast. And, and if it allows us to touch more people and hopefully somebody's learned something from today, or you know, uh, maybe maybe I learned something from today or you or whatever. Um, I, I just yeah. I always enjoy being on here and it's a good time and. And uh, I listen to your podcast as I'm walking every night, and uh, so I, I, I thoroughly enjoy it, and I'm, I'm just a glad to be a part of the team and help and, and help out. So I just appreciate awesome, it. Awesome, but.
I uh, want to uh, remind the listeners that uh, 10% off on all Outdoorsman's products using the J. Scott promo code. I want to give Cody a chance to give the 1-800 number and the website. Cody, where can guys find you? Yeah, it's 1-800-291-8065, or you can uh, go to www.outdoorsmans.com. That's O-U-T-D-O-O-R-S-M-A-N-S.com. And uh, if you have any questions or anything that I can help you out, out with or want to talk about subjects on the podcast or anything else, just call us up. We're always here to help. Yeah, and also um, Outdoorsman's on Instagram and Outdoorsman's on Facebook, guys. Make sure to connect, uh, like their page, and stay connected with the Outdoorsman's guys. And, Cody, once again, thanks for coming on. God bless you. And, uh I'll see you when I see you, and uh, hopefully uh, you'll be shooting your bow this summer. I'll be shooting my bow, and uh, we'll have good things uh, here to talk about this fall. So take care, buddy. We'll talk again soon. Thanks, Jay.